Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to Hacksplain. Today, we're going to have a look at the GDPR Data Erasure Challenge. And it tells us to log in with Chris's Erased User Can. And before we're going to start today's session, I just want to quickly inform you what the GDPR is standing for. And if we have a look at Wikipedia, GDPR is standing for General Data Protection Regulation. And this is a regulation in European Union law on data protection. And this is actually pretty important. And I don't want to talk too much about law right now, but the GDPR aims to give control to individuals over their personal data. That is pretty important to know. And one of the rights every single individual has is, for example, the right to erasure or what people are usually referring it to, um, the right to be forgotten. And this paragraph says, the article says that the data shall have the right to obtain from the controller the erasure, this is the important part of here, the erasure of personal data concerning him or her. And for example, over here it says, personal data which is no longer necessary in relation to the purposes for which they were collected or otherwise processed. So let's jump back to Ove's Juice Shop. We're assuming over here that Chris at one point had an account with Ove's Juice Shop, but decided at a later point in time that he didn't or doesn't want to use the Juice Shop or the application anymore, and he deleted his account. And with that, we would assume from Ove's Juice Shop that they're fully getting rid of Chris's data and that that data cannot be found anymore in the database. But we will have a look if this is actually the case or not. And for that, I'm actually going to make use of a previous challenge or the data we have obtained in the previous challenge. And I'm speaking of the database schema challenge in particular. And if you don't know or if you haven't solved this challenge by now, I can only highly recommend you to check out this challenge. I have produced a video on that challenge before. I will link it in the top right corner. Go over that video first and then come back because we're going to use the information that we got out of that challenge for today's challenge. And I will jump straight into the result from the database schema challenge. I'm still having it in my verb repeater and I called it the database schema tab over here. And if we look closely, this is the result of that challenge. And I don't want to talk too much about it. As I said, check out the other video first. Anyway, I want to quickly dive into the results again, the ones that we've got in the previous challenge. We got basically a full dump of all tables and all columns inside those tables of the database used by Ovis Chew Shop. And for example, this looks like that. You do have a table called addresses and addresses comes with a couple of columns like the ID column, the full name, the mobile num, the zip code and more, right? So the question right now is if we want to search for Chris's data, we would have to find the table first, which might be related to usernames and users in general. So let's scroll down a bit. I will go over all the tables that we have found in the previous challenge. And there is stuff like addresses, basket items, baskets, captures. I'll just keep going. There's a lot of tables in here. And if we reach the bottom of this output, we do see a table called users. And that sounds pretty promising if you ask me. Let's quickly have a look at the columns inside the users table. So we do have an ID, we do have a username, we do have an email, a password, a role, a last login IP, a profile image, a TOTP secret, and is active information created at, updated at, and deleted at. And this information over here sounds pretty interesting, deleted at, because we want to know if there is any information 
inside the table which already has been deleted. So let's quickly go over those columns again and think about which of those columns we would need for finding Chris's user and Chris's data. So I want to definitely go with deleted app because we're searching for deleted users. I want to go with um, what else do we have? I want to know the email and I want to know maybe something else, the username. And what I'm going to do is I will send this to repeater again. So we'll have this in another tab right over here. And I will call this tab the GDPR tab. And I will move this a little closer to our results from the previous challenge. And if we go back to that tab again, we do see that all that data resides in the users table. So instead of querying the SQLite master table, which has or had all that juicy data inside, we're going to query the users table. And instead of querying for the SQL column, like we've done in the previous challenge, we are going to query for a couple of different columns. And I was saying I want to have the deleted at information, I want to have the username, and I want to have the email. So let's send this to OS2 shop. And we do see data coming back. So now we have to have a look at all the data that we received and see if there's any interesting information in it. And I'll do that right now. So we have to keep in mind that ID over here is still the column out of the products table. So we have to translate that into the columns that we are selecting over here. So in our case, ID is standing for deleted at, name is standing for username, description is standing for email, and all the others we don't care about. So let's see first if there is a deleted at entry which says something different than null, because null apparently means that this user has not been deleted yet. So I will scroll down and I will only, I only see a lot of nulls, null, 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 null. Let's see if there is any other entry coming up. Still only nulls. I'll keep going. And there's an interesting one right over here. So let's check that out. That looks like a timestamp. It says 2020 May 16th and a time right over here. Perfect. So this is our only user inside the users table that has actually been deleted. And the user name is empty, no information in here. The email says chrispike at choose minus sh.op. So let's go back to the challenge description. And we do see that it says login with Chris's erased user account. So that seems to be the account that we want to log in with, which should have been erased, but apparently isn't. And I want to show you something right now before I'm going to use that email address. I am jumping back to Burb right over here. I will copy this email address and I will go to login right up here. And I will say email is chrispike at choose minus shop op and password is whatever asdf asdf and I will try to log in to solve the challenge but this is invalid so let's quickly check our proxy over here where we do see the post request that was sent to Oath Chew Shop where we tried to log in with email Chris Pike and password is ASDF. And I'm actually going to use a another SQL injection right now, another SQL injection vulnerability that we have found in another video. And I'm going to link that in the top right corner as well. But today I want to give you a little more insight why this other SQL injection 
vulnerability works. And I'm going to show you how to log in with Chris's email without actually knowing his password. And to, to do that, I will quickly go to my Kali Linux machine that I'm having running right over here. If you don't have Kali by now, I also have another video on that, and I will also link that in the top right corner. So make sure to check out those videos. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a local SQLite 3 database, which is a transient in memory database, which means it isn't stored. And I will go back to my repeater tab. And what you can do is, as we have already found the schema of that table, we can just uh, copy that. Uh, let me do that. Um, copy this whole string over here. Um, all the way up. That was a little bit too far. All the way up to date time. Copy it. Go over here to my SQLite database. And if you look at the current state, if I say tables, we don't have any tables inside. But if we go over here and say paste selection using that create table command out of the schema. Uh, let me see if I do have an error. I'm missing a parenthesis and click on tables again. We do see that we have successfully replicated the users table out of oath two shot. And before we can use the table and play around with it, we have to fill in a little bit of data first. And I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to say insert into the table is called users. And I want to insert data for ID, username, and what else? Email and password. And the values that I want to file in are, I'm going to say username, or uh, the ID is one. I am going to say the username is uh, Chris. Um, my email is, let me copy Chris's email one more time. Um, Chris Pike, let me copy that. And go back to my Kelly. I will say my email address is that address over here. And then I will say my password is ASDF, ASDF. And close that, insert into, go, huh, look at that, we do have an error. So let's quickly check what this error is saying. We do get an error saying not null constraint on the users created at column. And if we look closely, at the time we have created the table users, we have set the created at column to be not null right over here. So that means we have to fill in data for that column as well. So I'll just use the up arrow to get up that query one more time. And behind password, I'm going to say created at. So let's quickly check if there's any other not nulls. Um, looking at it closely, I actually do see that updated at is also supposed to be not null. So down here, I will say updated at as well. And obviously, we need values for those two. So we are going to say as it doesn't really matter right now, we're going to say test and test. So that should work out perfect. So right now we can select asterisk is standing for all the data from users and see what we get back. We get our data entry back, which is awesome. And what I want to show you right now is over here. If you would log in, you, you would usually find a query which selects the ID most of the time um, from the users table where the email is equal to Chris Pike at two shop and the password is equal to his password. But in 
let me quickly show you how it looked like. So during the login, you would have a query like select ID from users where, and we're going to say um, email equals, uh, let me see if I have that in here. No, this is not correct. I get a copy Chris's email address one more time. Uh, right over here, Chris Pike at Chew Shop. Copy and fill in here where email is that. And password equals ASDF, ASDF. And if everything is going right, we should get one right now because Chris's ID is one. So what if we do not know his password? What if we are just guessing like we think that his password is bananas because Chris pretty much loves bananas. We do see that we're not getting the entry back and during the login, that would mean we're not getting logged in. So what I want to show you right now is if we're controlling the password field and the email field, we can do something pretty interesting. We can say, let's see if we can close this string and then use a dash dash, which actually comments out the rest of this query. So let's see if that works. And we actually need to put down a, not a semicolon. And we do see that we do get the ID back. So that works. So now we know that if there is a SQL injection vulnerability in place, we can log in without knowing the password by adding a single quote and a double dash like I have done over here. Whoop, right over here. And we're going to do that right now. So let's go back to our login. And because we do not know the password, we're going to remove that. And we are jumping to the email right up here. And I told you right now, we're going to say single quote dash dash to make the rest of it a common and log in with Chris's email address right now. And if everything works out, we're going to be locked in in just a second with Chris, who shouldn't even exist anymore, which violates the GDPR law. All right, that was a lot. So let's see if that works. I will hit enter. And now I'm facing a password client side control over here. I will just fill in anything in here. It doesn't really matter just to fulfill client side security controls and click login and we're logged in as Chris Pike at Juice Shop. And yeah, that was it. We do see the green box lighting up over here. We've successfully solved the challenge. That was an awesome challenge for today. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions around that, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel in the top right corner and check out all the other videos in that playlist. With that, see you next time. Have a great day.